Both the nearest neighbor and the probabilistic data association algorithm approximate the posterior using a single Gaussian density. In complicated scenarios, this is often a crude approximation that leads to poor performance. We can obtain better approximations by maintaining a Gaussian mixture with a limited number of components. We generally refer to such algorithms as Gaussian sum filters. And in the next videos, we introduce IDs and theory for single object Gaussian sum filtering. The basic idea behind Gaussian sum filtering is to approximate the posterior using a Gaussian mixture with more than one component in order to obtain a better approximation. In many cases, the posterior contains a very large number of components or hypotheses, but the posterior may still be dominated by a small number of these hypotheses. And we can then approximate the posterior accurately by pruning all the insignificant components. In the figure to the right, the exact posterior in black contains 108 components. The orange curve marked with crosses illustrates the output from a Gaussian sum filter with five components. As you can see, with only five components, we obtain an approximation which is much more accurate than what we would obtain using nearest neighbor or probabilistic data association. It should be noted though, that the illustrated Gaussian sum filter caps the number of components to five at all times, and that it therefore introduces approximations also before time five. We will describe this strategy in more detail shortly. To give you an idea about what the recursions might look like, we assume that we end every recursion with a Gaussian mixture with a number of different components. Every component has a weight W and a Gaussian density P K given K with superindex H. We assume that the hypotheses or components are numbered from one to calligraphic capital H. And at time K minus one, the capital H has a subindex K minus one. We can then perform prediction and update on this Gaussian mixture. And for every hypothesis at time k minus one, we obtain mk plus one new hypotheses, giving us hk minus one times mk plus one components in the posterior at time k. As before, we use this symbol breathe to denote the posterior at time k before we introduce the new approximations. If both gk and pi k are linear and Gaussian, and we have a constant probability of detection, p breathe is a Gaussian mixture. To obtain a tractable algorithm, we need to limit the number of components in the posterior to a reasonable level. The main question that we are facing is therefore how we can approximate this Gaussian mixture as a Gaussian mixture with fewer components. We will describe three simple techniques to reduce the number of hypotheses. The first strategy is to select the threshold gamma and remove all hypotheses whose weights are smaller than gamma. For instance, if gamma is 0.01 and that we have a Gaussian mixture with three components where the second has a weight 0.005, we would conclude that the second hypothesis is insignificant and remove it from the mixture. After pruning, we then obtain a new density, here denoted as P with an acute accent above it that only contains two components. Note that the weights in P acute are normalized to ensure that they sum to one. When we speak about a Gaussian mixture with two components, I normally just think about it like this, where we have two Gaussian densities with different weights, means, and covariances. However, right now we have two hypotheses numbered one and three. And according to what we stated on the previous slide, we want the hypotheses to have numbers from one to capital H where capital H would be two in this case. At the end of the pruning step, we therefore introduce new variables, in this case with the numbers one and two, that we use to store the weights, means, and covariances of the remaining components in the mixture. Let us look at what an algorithm that does this might look like. We start with a threshold gamma and a Gaussian mixture with capital H components. The output from the algorithm should be a new Gaussian mixture normally with fewer components. The first thing that we can do is to find the indices of all the weights that are larger than gamma and store these indices in a list int. These are the indices of the hypotheses that we intend to keep. We can then compute the normalization factor for the weights 
by summing up the weights of all the hypotheses that we intend to keep. Finally, we can go through the hypothesis in the list end and store the parameters for those hypotheses in the new variables w acute, x acute, and p acute. Another technique to reduce the number of components is merging. We have already seen how the PDA filter merges all components in a mixture and replaces it with a single Gaussian density. We will now study how we can merge some components in the mixture. In this example, P1 and P2 are two Gaussian densities that are similar. An example of this is illustrated in the figure, where we have a Gaussian mixture P of X in black, and P1 and P2 have similar mean and variances, whereas the mean of P3 is quite different. It may then be tempting to approximate P1 and P2 using a single Gaussian density. However, it's not trivial to use the techniques from PDA filtering to do this, since these densities only make up part of the density P of X. But there is a nice trick that enables us to do this. The density that we are looking at is W1 P1 plus W2 P2 plus W3 P3, where we would like to replace the first two components with one. To do this, it is helpful to introduce a notation W12 for the total weight of the first two components. Here's the trick. We can now write the first two terms as W12 times the two terms divided by W12. Inside the parentheses, P1 then has a weight W1 divided by W12, and P2 has a weight W2 divided by W12. Since these two weights sum to one, we actually have a density inside the parentheses. Now, since the density within the parentheses is a Gaussian mixture where P1 and P2 are similar, we should be able to approximate that density fairly accurately using the techniques from the PDA videos. I have illustrated the density P12 of X in the figure, and you can see that it is some kind of trade-off between P1 of X and P2 of X. We now obtain an approximation to the Gaussian mixture where we have replaced the first two components with a single component. The approximation P acute is illustrated using a green curve marked with squares. And at least in this example, that density is very similar to the original mixture in black. The key to obtaining this approximation was to normalize the weights of the components that we wanted to merge such that they became a PDF. We could then approximate them as a Gaussian density with the same mean and covariance, which can be done using the equations from the PDA filter. Describing a general Gaussian sum filtering algorithm that performs merging is beyond the scope of this video, but I hope that you have at least understood some of the principles and ideas behind merging in this context. Both of the strategies that we have presented so far are reasonable, but they may not always lead to a tractable algorithm since we may still be left with too many hypotheses. A pragmatic way to fix this problem is to prune away the most unlikely hypotheses until we are left with n max hypotheses, where n max is the maximum number of hypotheses that we think that we can manage. Hopefully, the above description is enough to understand the idea, but it may also be helpful to look at the algorithm in more detail. The input to the pruning algorithm described here is n max, and a Gaussian mixture with more than n max components. If we have fewer than n max components, we don't need to use the algorithm. The output from the algorithm is another Gaussian mixture with precisely n max components. Using MATLAB notation, we can use the command sort and ask it to sort the weights in descending order. Note that the part that we are looking for is a list, here called ind, that contains the indices of the components sorted such that the index of the largest weight comes first, followed by the index of the second largest weight, and so on. Given this list, it is easy to identify the n max components with the highest weight, since those are the n max first elements in the list. As a next step, we can compute the normalization factor needed to ensure that the weights sum to one after pruning the less probable components. We do that by summing up the weights of the components that we intend to keep. Finally, we go through the n max first hypothesis in the list end and store the parameters for those hypotheses in the new variables w acute, x acute, and p acute, where the weights are also divided by c to ensure that they become normalized. By the way, 
if you want, you can instead ignore computing Z and normalize the weights W acute afterwards, since this will give the same result. To obtain a tractable Gaussian sum filter, we need to limit the number of components in our approximation to the posterior. We have presented three techniques to reduce the number of components in this mixture. These techniques can be combined in different ways. The easiest way to obtain a tractable algorithm is probably to directly cap the number of hypotheses in the mixture and prune all hypotheses but the Nmax best ones. You may obtain slightly better performance, for instance, by first removing components with small weights. This may reduce the computational complexity. And then go through the hypotheses and merge similar components before you finally cap the number of hypotheses to Nmax. Importantly, once we are done reducing the number of components in the Gaussian mixture, we obtain what we refer to as the posterior in the Gaussian sum filter. We use WK, HK, and P, K given K, HK to denote the weights and densities in the posterior mixture according to the filter.